Eric, so tell me, do you have you been to a consultation before for Smart Lipo? Have you read anything? Have you seen anything on TV or videos or anything like that? I did watch a few videos on YouTube, but other than that, just to prep myself for today. But no, I'm I'm kind of a uh, Smart Lipo virgin. Okay, good. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that everything that I think you need to know. Okay. And that's for many reasons. One. I feel that if you know exactly what I think I expect and I have a good understanding that you understand that, then, and I think you're a good candidate for the surgery, then I'm happy to proceed. If you understand what you think you should get and I perform, then you should be a happy patient. Okay. So let's do that. All right. Okay. Uh, first, we'll talk about the theory behind liposuction. I sort of make my living adjusting volume to envelopes. If it's your face, I usually adjust your skin envelope to your face. If it's breast surgery, I'll either take out volume and change the envelope. If it's a breast augmentation, I'll add volume or I can add volume and tailor the envelope. As far as liposuction is concerned, basically what we're doing is removing volume. Traditional liposuction before the advent of smart liposuction we could suction out fat and then just sort of hope the, that the skin would retract back enough to give you a nice contour. What's nice about Smart Lipo is we now have the capability not only of taking out fatty volume, but we can help the skin retract to meet that new volume. With traditional liposuction after the age of 36, your skin elasticity uh, starts to decrease so that for the most part after the age of 36, y you're a decreasingly uh, uh, worse patient for liposuction. Now that we can get the skin to retract back, I not only can do smart lipo in a much wider range of patient population according to age, and I can do areas that weren't amenable to, or very much amenable to traditional liposuction, uh, those areas being underarms mm -hmm. in, in patients that don't need formal excision brachioplasties. I can do inner thighs because I can get the inner thigh skin to retract back. So not only can we do more patients at older ages, but we can do areas in anybody that, we, that I really didn't feel good about before. The nice thing, too, for me personally about Smart Lipo is that although I've been doing liposuction since 1982, about the time when it came to the States, I was never really enthusiastic about it. Being a traditionally classically trained plastic surgeon, uh, I never thought that traditional liposuction needed much finesse. If you've seen pictures or videos of it, it looks kind of crude. Okay. But now, with the two wavelengths that, that are offered with Smart Lipo, using the smaller cannulas, I can much more selectively remove fat in really small areas, be much more exact about it, tighten the skin. So I'm, I'm a much more enthusiastic surgeon with this new tool rather than what was available before. You see better results? I see much better results. Okay. Uh, yeah. In, on many levels. One is that it's that I have much more control over what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And two, I can do it under local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Three, because we use much thinner cannulas, and I'll show you that later, it is much less traumatic. You can be back to work much sooner. You can be up and around the next day. So I'm much happier with Smart Lipo uh, MPX than I ever was with any sort of traditional liposuction. After, you, after any sort of smart liposuction, it's imperative that you wear a compressive girdle. Why do we do that? If you would think of your body in cross sections so that you have your skin here, fatty layer here, and muscle here, after I go through with a suction cannula of any type, mm -hmm. if we cross section that you, your, your fatty layer would kind of look like Swiss cheese. Okay. Some areas bigger holes, some areas smaller holes. That compressive garment will then squeeze that extremity or that area down to give you the nicest, smoothest, uh, most natural contour possible mm -hmm. uh, if it's compressed for three weeks' time. Okay. 
Wow, so, in three weeks. Three weeks. You have to wear a compressor girdle pretty much all the time, except, you know, to, for shower and alike. Otherwise, you wear a girdle all the time, and we always tell you to buy two because you, one has, to, you can't put them in the dryer. So while you wash one and it hangs dry, you wear the other. I mean, is it like a control top pantyhose? Pretty much. Okay. I mean, with minimal liposuction, we often have people wear that kind of thing, or okay. they can wear biking shorts or Spanx. Or, yep. But the bigger the area, the okay. longer the area, then we have very attractive, no, no I'm being facetious, <laughs> uh, compressive garments with special zippers that don't cause a ridge that you'll wear all the time. Okay. So let's talk basically about liposuction. Okay. Liposuction is not a procedure that you substitute for dieting, weight loss, and exercise. The infomercials that you see on TV are false. You cannot exercise your stomach and reduce the amount of body fat in your lower stomach. You can, you can tone up the muscles below. You can, through a lot of exercise, decrease your total body fat, but you can't change that basic proportion that you were destined to have when you were one day old. That's when you call in the liposuction expert. We can plane down that bulge that you can't do anything with, but live with if you want. Mm -hmm. So that if your hips look like this, yep. and we can bring in the liposuction equipment and make them flat rather than bulge, you can gain weight and lose weight and maintain that new proportion. Oh, okay. Your body, and people often ask, well, suppose I have liposuction and you reduce the size of my hips. And if I gain five pounds, is it going to come back? Your body is not that smart. Your body is not going to take those first five pounds and put them back in your hips. If you have those same, for example, that same hundred fat cells that we talked about before, took five fat cells away from your hips, you have 95 left. Mm -hmm. When you gain weight, or if you do gain weight, those 95 fat cells that you have left get bigger and smaller. They don't redeposit where we took them out. Okay. Okay? So the results of liposuction are permanent. You can still gain or lose weight if you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. But what we do with liposuction is reproportion your body. Make your hips, if that's the case, more in proportion to your chest and shoulders and waist. Okay? Yep. So that once you're in nice proportion, you are what we consider attractive. Attractiveness, what we consider attractive, has nothing to do with total body weight. A size 2 versus a size 20 can be equally as attractive as long as they're properly proportioned. Okay. Got it? I understand that. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, the risks of liposuction are minimal. There's risks of bleeding, infection, wound healing problems, numbness, tingling. Uh, the risks of liposuction are minimal. There's risks of bleeding, infection, wound healing problems, numbness, tingling. Really, basically, the biggest risk of liposuction is rippling and dippling.